Today I'm going to use chlorine gas to oxidize ferrocyanide to ferrocyanide. Now before I even get into this, I want to note that even though it's incredibly useful and fairly commonplace in laboratories, chlorine gas is incredibly dangerous. This is because when it's inhaled, chlorine reacts with the antioxidant molecules in your lungs and forms hydrochloric acid, which you really don't want in your lungs. Exposure to chlorine gas can cause permanent damage or even be life-threatening, and I don't recommend anyone use it without formal training. With that out of the way, to make ferrocyanide into ferrocyanide, I begin by making a saturated solution of potassium ferrocyanide and add it to this cold trap. I typically use this piece to dry gases, and I'm only doing the reaction in it because it looks cool on video. To generate my chlorine gas, I add some calcium hypochlorite pool shock to a three-neck boiling flask and stopper it. I then set up an addition funnel filled with concentrated hydrochloric acid which will be slowly dripped into the calcium hypochlorite. The two chemicals will immediately and exothermically react to form chlorine gas and calcium chloride. The chlorine gas is fed by a tube into my reaction vessel where it's bubbled through the potassium ferrocyanide solution. The chlorine gas will react with the potassium ferrocyanide, oxidizing it to potassium ferrocyanide. This will also produce potassium chloride as a byproduct. You can actually see this reaction happen in real time as the solution darkens. Eventually it'll change from this pale yellow color to a deep red, and it used to be named after that. Specifically, ferrocyanide was referred to as yellow prussate, while potassium ferrocyanide was referred to as red prussate. Anyway, I keep generating chlorine and keep this reaction going for about 45 minutes until I notice chlorine gas is no longer being absorbed by the ferrocyanide. This is indicated by the yellow chlorine gas at the top of the cold trap, and at this point, I stop the reaction. I transfer my product to a crystallization dish, and now you can very clearly see the red color. To isolate my pure product, I began by boiling off as much water as I could before adding some acetone. The point of the acetone was to help drive off more water, but when I did add it, everything turned this orange color which I really didn't expect. I'm not certain if this actually caused a chemical reaction or degraded my product, and if you do know, feel free to leave a comment. Anyway, my next step was a vacuum filtration to separate my solid product from the residual water. My hope here was that the potassium chloride that formed during the reaction, as well as any unreacted potassium ferrocyanide, would be filtered through due to their lower solubility. This would also unfortunately result in the loss of some product, as potassium ferrocyanide and ferrocyanide have very similar solubilities. However, I think this first crystallization was too conservative, as my product was still very clearly contaminated, so I decided to do a recrystallization. The recrystallization definitely seemed to help, as my final product was now the deep orange-red color of ferrocyanide. The downside is that my final yield was really low, so in its current form, this is not an efficient process. Regardless, I hope you found this interesting, and as always, follow to see more.